Okay, so you've got basic variables down and how to do a couple of semi-practical things with them. We're going to take a look now at how to use a more complex variable type, which is the array. And we're also going to take a look at how you can use that in logical statements, like the if statement and the for statement. So, let's get started. Defining an array is possible in a couple of ways. We're going to take a look at a really simple one. Um, and it's very similar to defining a regular variable. So we're going to say my array equals new array, and that's the array creation function right there, capital A R R A Y, and we want to give the array uh, some contents. Now an array is basically a variable with a bunch of different variables in it. So we're going to say that this is a names array, and I'm going to say the first name is Rodrigo. The second name is Adam. The third name is Lisa. The fourth name is Paloma. And the fifth name is David. So we have five entries into our array. And if we alert my array, save that, reload, you can see it shows us Rodrigo, Adam, Lisa, Paloma, David. Now there's lots of stuff you can do with arrays we're not going to get into right now, but for example, you can sort them and I could, you, I could alphabetize these names, um, I could reverse them, I could move the last one to the first place, the first place to the last place. There are lots of functions that you can use to sort and organize your arrays. Uh, we don't need any of that right now because what we're going to do is take this and our previous sentence and use an array to alert it using some logical statements. And the first one we're going to work with is the for statement. So the for statement works kind of like this. We have four, and then these colons, and then we're going to use brackets. That's a new one, brackets, to put stuff in. Now, this isn't going to work as it is. This doesn't make any sense. So you've got four saying this is the kind of statement. This is the information that four is working with right here, and then this is what's to be done about it inside the brackets here. Now, to get a four statement together, a basic one looks like this. I equals zero and we'll talk about what this means in a minute. i is less than some number. We're going to say 10 right now, but we're going to change that. And then i++. plus plus. No, just plus plus, not three pluses. Um, so i is a variable, and if you're in a strictly typed language, it would be var i number. Um, i is just the variable we're using in the for statement, and it is a number, and we're setting it at a starting point of zero. That's statement number one. Statement number two is i is less than 10. This is saying for the variable i, which is equal to 0, so long as i is less than the number 10, add 1 to i. Plus plus is a way of just saying add on another number. So every time this statement runs, will be a time that i is less than 10. But every time it runs, it will also add 1. So the first time it runs, i will be 0. The second time it runs, i will be 1. And then i will be 2, and 3, and 4. And eventually, this is going to say, wait a minute, i is equal to 10. That's more than, that, that's, that's uh, too much, and so we're going to stop. So, as you can see, this is a statement that will make the code inside these break, in, inside so as you can see, this is a statement that will make the code inside these brackets run 10 times. So what we need to do here is alter this so we can make our food statement alert the number of times that there are names in the array. So how many names are in the array? There are five. Now we could go like this knowing that there are five names in the array, or we could go myArray.length. If I can type length. Um, and that will tell JavaScript to say, how long is this array? Well, there are five names in the array, so it's, it, will, it will just turn out to be five. And that way, if you add or subtract a name, the code will adjust all by itself, knowing how long the array is. So what we're going to say is alert, and we're going to say my array, and then in these square brackets, i. And this is how you 
get a, a specific thing out of an array. Each of these are assigned a number. 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Everything starts at 0, not at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this is going to be equal to 0 when it starts, and like we found out, every time this code runs, it's going to go up one number. And so this way, my array is going to be 0, and that's going to point to Rodrigo. And then when it runs again, it's going to be Adam, and it's going to, because it's going to, I is going to be 1, and it's going to point to Adam. And then it's going to go to 2 and point to Lisa, and 3 to Paloma, and 4 to David. And that's going to let us change the total numbers. So now this is not this is not going to be a sentence that makes a whole lot of sense, but um, we're going to we're going to say Adam space eight space how many apples? We're going to say number total minus i, and we're going to put that in bracket in parentheses because we don't want it to. Um, we want the math to be uh, taken care of on itself because we're, 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 when we're adding strings together, um, you know, the uh, numbers will get converted to strings if they're not mathematically uh, taken care of ahead of time. So we just need to add a period here. So it's nice. It's a nice sentence. Um, and then save the code. And so this is going to give us five alerts. No one wants five alerts in a row, but we're testing stuff out here, so it's okay. I'm gonna reload. Rodrigo 835. Oh, I forgot to put apples in there. Adam 834. Lisa 833. Paloma 832. Dave 831. Or David. And we got 5 because the array length was 5. If I add another name, let's not do that. Let's, let's take out a name and make this a little bit shorter. And we're going to add space food type space. Oh, no, we just need period. Okay, so now this time when I reload it, we'll only get four alerts. Rodrigo ate 35 pineapples. Adam ate 34 pineapples. Lisa ate 33 pineapples. David ate 32 pineapples. I took out Paloma, and this code just adjusted all by itself, because it knew this is how long the, uh, the array was. Now there's one more thing we're going to look at for logical statements, and then we're going to call it quits on this section, um, and that is the if statement. Now the if statement says, if this is true, then do this, otherwise do something else. Um, and we can write this in a couple of ways. Now I'm going to comment this out, and we are definitely going to talk about comments later, but if something is commented out, it means it won't run, and you do that by putting two slashes ahead of there. But it's good coding practice to use comments, and we will be talking about comments um, in a little bit, but for now. An if statement looks like this. Looks a lot like a for statement at first. If, and then your parentheses, and then you got brackets. If whatever is in here happens, do what's in here inside these brackets, or curly braces as some people like to call them. So, how do we test for something in an if statement? Well, we can say if the uh, let's say let's say the uh, number of apples, if the number total minus i, which is what we've been working with, is greater than thirty three, then we'll alert, and we'll alert this sentence right here. So let's take that out and paste it right in there and get rid of that comment. So this sentence will only happen if the number total minus i, which is how many times the for statement is run, is true. And you may remember true from the Boolean variable types. So true and false. So I'm going to save that and reload. Rodrigo ate 33 pine 35 pineapples. Adam ate 34 pineapples. And that's it. It didn't give us Lisa and David's number because the if statement said only tell us if we're if if someone ate more than thirty three. So what do we want to find out if someone ate less than thirty three? Well, the simplest way to do that is to add onto the if statement an else statement. Now you don't need to give it anything because all we're just saying right here is else. Otherwise, you know, if that's if if what's in the if statement isn't met, then just do this instead. So we're going to say alert 
my array i, the name of the person, plus didn't eat enough apples. Save that. And if we reload here, Rodrigo ate 35 pineapples. I guess we're talking about pineapples. <laughs> Adam ate 34 pineapples. Lisa didn't eat enough. We'll just pretend that says pineapples. And David didn't eat enough pineapples. Um, there we are. In fact, we can even go so far as to make this food type. And then the problem is solved there. So we've got one more thing to look at with if statements, and that is a combination between the if and the else, and that is else if. And an else if statement looks just like if, and it says, okay, so this is the first condition we're testing for, but if that doesn't work out, well, then what's this one? Um, and see if that works out. And if that doesn't work out, then we'll move on to the else. And you can have as many else ifs in here as you want, but it can get kind of long, and it's not always the best way to do things. But for basic logic, it works out just fine. So we're going to say, OK, well, if it's greater than 33 apples, then this is the statement I want. If it is equal to 33, let's say that's the perfect number of apples eaten, or pineapples, I guess, since that's what we're working with. So we're going to say number total minus i is equal to 33. So what happens if it is equal to 33? We're going to alert my array i, the name of the person, ate the perfect number of food type, period. And, and that statement with a semicolon. So now when we reload this, Rodrigo ate 35 pineapples, Adam ate 34 pineapples, Lisa ate the perfect number of pineapples, David didn't eat enough pineapples. And so you can see Rodrigo Adam started at 35, 34, got this statement. Lisa ended up at 33, got this statement. David ended up at 32 and was the loser of the group. And if you add any more names onto this array, they'll also be losers as well. Unless you add them to the front, in which case, you know, it pushes them down. So that's kind of how that works. Now the one thing we didn't really take a look at while writing this are these things here. And these are how we're testing um, our statements in logic. This is a greater than symbol. This is a less than symbol. Um, and this is an equals to symbol. Now, if you just put equals, that's saying, well, this is equal to this. But if you want to test if it's equal to something, you put it twice. Now, there are a couple more of those we're going to look at before we uh, wrap up here. And I'm just going to go down here to do that. If you wanted to test for something that is greater than or equal to, you put greater than and equal to. Less than and equal to looks like that. If you want to say it's not equal to, you do exclamation point equal to. And so those are the basic things you can use to test for different things when you're writing your logic statements. And that's about it. That's how you put some logic together in your code. Lastly, in this section, we are going to be looking at how functions work and how you can take all of this and use it in an actual program.